Hi, hope you can see me. I'm uh, doing a uh, walk time rant. Oh, not really a rant, more of a uh, Q&A, questions and answers. Uh, I thought I'd just answer a question from the forum as, you know, in the walk time sort of uh, format. So hopefully you can hear me and hopefully the wind isn't uh, too bad today. It's a little bit windy. Maybe I need to wear a... a uh, a dead cat uh, wind uh, mic with a little dead cat on it or something. I don't know. Anyway, the question comes from uh, Shane95 from the forum. And he asks an excellent question about... Uh, he basically wants to learn electronics. And his question is, is designing a kit a good way to do it? And the reason he asked that is because he heard on my live show uh, I answered a question from an 11 year old uh, kid who asked a similar question, how to learn electronics, and it's a good question. Should you do a kit or design a real product to, uh, in, in order to learn electronics? Well, the traditional uh, way to learn electronics, of course, and it still stands, is just to design as many circuits as you can, build them, most important, and, uh, and fail, of course. Fail is a big one. You must fail in order to learn. It's one thing to build up your circuit on your breadboard, uh, for example, and just uh, and, and it works okay, you do, might fail, you debug it, it works, then you might build it into a case, a one-off case, and your mate might lay out a board for it, that's great, everything's, you know, you're learning a fair bit of electronics that way. And, uh, but it's just a one-off. You didn't really have any constraints to your design at all, you just had no idea and you used whatever parts you uh, had available, either in your junk bin or what you found on, uh, you know, DigiKey or uh, eBay or something to build up your circuit. And you didn't really put much research into it, you just build it and it works. So I think it's much more valuable to actually design a kit or a product, a real world product, and then that really gives you, it sets, first thing it does is it sets uh, very targeted constraints, design constraints, with which to work in. Um, not only in terms of uh, component selection, packaging, housing, all that sort of stuff starts to come into play that you never would have got if you just design your circuit one-off and build it into your own box one-off and you put no thought into manufacturing the thing, actually mass manufacturing the thing. Um, got across the road here, sorry. Don't get run over as I rant. I'll pick that back up. So, yeah, if you design a one-off uh, product, yeah, you, you learn the usual stuff, but then design a real-world product, you set constraints, and that's not meant to something that a lot of designers actually end up doing, even sometimes their entire career. They won't actually design a product from start to finish. So they might, not, might never be involved in the housing, they might never be involved in the specs, they might never be involved in, uh, you know, the firmware side of things. They might never be involved in user interface design, handling, uh, you know, shock testing, vibration, all that environmental stuff, uh, designing for high volume, uh, low cost, component availability. There's a whole swag of things that, um, you know, really go into designing. Even, even a very simple kit, as you've seen in a little bit of in my power supply design series. So, yeah, if you design a kit or a product and set those constraints, and you'll learn a hell of a lot because you'll find that when you uh, start to design something like that, you might have to look through, say, a dozen. You need an analog to digital converter. You look through a dozen different analog to digital converters to find one that meets your price, performance, availability, package type, power consumption, all sorts of stuff that you ordinarily wouldn't worry too much about if you're just designing a one-off. So you instantly end up with um, the ability to um, find these alternative components. And, it's, and then you end up researching these parts and you look at them, you never would have found them otherwise. It's a huge difference. And uh, then you get into, of course, the housing, the construction, of the thing and the design for testing, 
Ah, oh, all sorts of stuff. So, yes, Shane, by all means, um, design a, a kit or a real world product or something like that. Even if it's just an example, even if you have no intention of actually manufacturing this thing, it doesn't matter. Setting those design constraints means that you'll be pushed in certain directions and you have to design things in a certain way, think differently, and think like often a real world product designer. And that's probably more valuable overall than just building, learning electronics by building up your circuit one-off. So there you go. Um, I hope I answered your question. And if you like this uh, segment, please give it the thumbs up and I'll do it some more. Catch you next time.